We've been talking about divorce. There's been no divorce between the Everly Brothers, but we've got <laughs> one here now. Will you welcome Mr. Phil Everly? <laughs> It's a lesson too late for the learning Made of sand Made of sand In the wink of an eye my soul is turning In your hand In your hand Are you going away With no word of farewell Will there be not a trace Of goodbye oh, I could have Loved you better Didn't mean to be unkind you know that was the last thing on my mind Underneath my feet the subways run down Underground Underground In my mind my thoughts, they are tumbling Round and round Round and round Are you going away With no word of sound? Will there be not a trace of goodbye? could have loved you better I didn't mean to be unkind You know that was the last thing on my mind You know that was the last thing on my mind Welcome back with Connie Stevens and Phil Everly, whom you can see every Wednesday at nine, right? Right. Replacing the craft music. Uh, no, 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 Johnny replacing Cash. Johnny Cash. It's, it's called ABC. Johnny Cash Presents the Everly Brothers. Presents the Everly Brothers. Yeah. We're very happy about it. And, uh, I am too. I'm their biggest oh, fan. <laughs> well, it's terrific for you to be here then. <laughs> but, I hear you were all talking about, uh, talking about the subjects we've just been discussing. Is oh, that right? yeah. We were downstairs discussing it because uh, I'm going through that too. I'm going through it. I'm in the middle of all that, you know, divorce. Laughingly. <laughs> 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 How old is your son? Three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half. I have the uh, most beautiful son. I know. That's what I'm saying. My son is the most beautiful son in the world. You know, really. Uh, Tell us about it. What's, well, what's his name? Jason. Philip Jason. We call him Jason. Why didn't you call him Philip? Because your didn't... father was called Phil, wasn't No, it? no, uh, his father was called Phil. And yeah. That's why we call him Philip Jason. And uh, uh, we call him Jason, though, you know. And, uh, he's really something, he's like, he's got hair the color of, if you were to have hair, it's the color of sunshine. It really is, you know, gold and it's beautiful. He's really <laughs> something. He's terrific talking about it. But yeah. the, uh, you also, in addition to all of the music thing, which I want to come back to. Well, no, in fact, let's go straight well, into it. I'm fascinated. What, how many records have you sold altogether, do you think? Um, Don and I have sold, um, uh, the last time they, they ran a count, it was like 35, a little over 35 million. And uh, um, we hope to sell two or three more. <laughs> and, you know, but, uh, which, which one sold the most? Uh, in the United States, Wake Up Little Susie, uh, which is a long time ago, we sold a little over two million. And, but worldwide, Kathy's Clown, which is a song Don and I wrote, uh, uh, was the biggest. Really? Yeah. How did you get into it all in the first place? Um, our mother and father were in, a, uh, were in show business, and they were in a, a, a family show. 
uh, and we started in radio. And uh, we just kind of grew up in it. I was six and Don was eight. We were real little and it, it's been 25 years. And, uh, um, yeah, that's right. It's been 25 years. How, how when you were six or something, did you perform yeah. for audiences? And well, we were on live radio. Uh, it's an ancient art that's since died. The, uh, and we used to do early morning family, sh uh, like a radio show we do. Uh, um, uh, we'd you know, perform for the farmers in the Midwest a lot. It was on the radio. And they'd milk their cow and listen to the Everly family sing, you know, about the set. And, you know, what sort of songs did you sing? I don't know if they were contented or not. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of songs did you sing? Anything. Uh, mostly country and western gospel. I saw the light, you know, and, and uh, we meant it was the sun coming up, you know, things like that. Oh, gospel. I love gospel music. Yeah, Terrific music. Actually, David, you know, I don't know whether the people are aware of this, but the Everly Boys are really kind of pioneers, you know, if you look back in it. They were pro they probably did more for rock and roll, in fact, real, uh, and, and the country feel, than any other artist, including Elvis Presley, they were around. Uh, thanks, Connie. I said, but, it, uh, it happens to be true. Elvis did the thing, you know. Yeah, he sort of, he, Elvis made all that. Yeah, thing. made it all happen, but they were among the first, and it's nice to see them being appreciated now. Uh -uh. Again, the second time around. Do you find you have to be very different today in singing, or can you use the same? I mean, do you find the audience is different now to five or ten years uh, ago? I think it's better. The uh, I think an audience is, uh, people are, are, are brighter with what they listen to, and they listen with with uh, more of an open open mind. In the beginning, it was difficult uh, because they really thought that your main trade was the hubcap business, and that you did you know the music as a as a cover. So <laughs> they drove to the show, and then you got to steal their hubcaps and doing intermission. You know, <laughs> uh, some of us may have done it. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have sense enough to, but uh, it had a respectability. Uh, no, it has a respectability. I think that it didn't have in the beginning. I read it. I read in one of your biographies, Phil, that you go a lot to swap meets, and I don't know what they are. Oh, that's a. I have a. Uh, in my divorce, <laughs> I managed to drive off with a with one of the cars, and and it's a thirty-two Packard, you see, which is my love, and I, I drive it around, and I, I'm. On uh, weekends, I go to swap meets when I have time. So what is a swap meet? Exactly? Well, swap I've never meet. been to one. No, uh, it's an experience and a half. It's an education. You go to um, uh, there's a big collection of people like me that really don't know what they're doing there either, but they've got bundles of junk and things that they'll have. Um, you'll see anything. You can get um, like I go like for car parts sometimes, and you, but you can get trade things for like fruit jars and uh, uh, ketchup bottles made into candle holders and you know all kinds of things like that. Uh, I've got uh, rooms full of junk that I <laughs> no use, but I may start my own swap meets, you know, try to trade it. What's up. the best bargain you've ever got? The best thing? Yeah. Um, uh, I got a watch fob one time that uh, was really good. A what? <laughs> a watch fob. Uh, it's a, it was French enamel. It was very, very good. I've got it there. <laughs> it's a fob. Oh, it's beautiful. It is, not what did you give away to get that? Um, uh, four hubcaps to a packer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and surprisingly enough, I didn't need those, so, you know. Uh, you, you're a great one for old cars, actually. I love them, yeah. Not just the hubcaps, but the whole... No, uh, the, uh, the, the packer that I've got is, is just like, you know, uh, it's a little hard to explain it. If, you have to be a complete idiot or something crazy in some slight way to be driving one, but I drive it and it's it's really nice. And I have a 32 Studebaker too. <laughs> what's that? Like like <laughs> yeah, they all run great. They run much better than uh, I've gone many a time and uh, picked up friends with my car that have broken down those in the modern. Uh, and what's terrific about a 32 Studebaker? Um, uh, the 32 Studebaker? Yeah. Well, mine has the 32. The reason I really like the 32 is because I managed to get this under difficult stress because the man that owned the car had owned it from the beginning. In fact, I don't know if he knows I have it because uh, I saw it in a parking lot. I do this lots of times. I drive badly, you know, going this way and looking for cars, you know, old cars. And I pull in and I ask people, you, will you sell it, you know, and things like that. And, but I saw this car in a, um, in a parking lot in Hollywood and it was... It, uh, <laughs> I'm a real bore with this, I must tell you, because I love them. 
but it had, you know, wire wheels and it had uh, uh, two wheels and the fenders and, and it was a coupe and it was just look rakish and looked like a, I think put a good put a, you know, a, a jacket and a flatted fifth, you know, in your pocket and all. It could really be a, and say, you know, with the 23 could do, you know, it had that kind of feeling to it. And uh, I went and I asked a man, I said, who owns it? And this, this oldish man came out and uh, he looked at me and I don't think he liked particularly what I stood for, whatever that was, because with hair, you know, I had long hair and and uh, I said, would you like to sell your car? And he said, no, you know. And uh, so I took that as a definite answer. And uh, I left, but I, sent, I went back again and I asked him. And he said, no, I don't want to sell it to you. And uh, with a few words that it would exchange, the last thing that he said was communist punk. And I left. <laughs> no, I'm not feeling too good. So I said, because people that own cars all their life, you know, are very funny about them. And he wanted it to go to a good home. Now, I would make a good home for it. I believe you. I believe you. Restore it, repaint it and everything. But he didn't believe it. So I think he was during, he was watching a lot of trouble was going on, you know, with kids in the street and all. And I think he just didn't like the way I looked. So I sent down two or three people. And by the time... That, short hair. You know, short hair, honestly. With short hair. And uh, the price kept going up. And it was me bidding against myself, you know, because there was so many people. And it finally ended up that he got a very good price. But the man that bought it for me was was a friend of mine that, that uh, went down in a gas station attendant's outfit and looked like regular. He related somehow, and he got the car for me. So I love it, yeah. Uh, and it's turned out to be a bargain for you as well? Well, sort of. <laughs> Are you mad about collecting anything like that, Connie? I collect people. <laughs> I know we can get an old man. I'm sure they're delighted to be collected once more. We'll take a break there. We'll be right back with Connie Stevens, Phil Everly, and Juliet Mills. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back with Connie Stevens and Phil Everly. And to welcome to join us now, direct from the nanny and the professor, will you welcome Miss Juliet Mills? <laughs> <laughs> Juliet, welcome. Terrific to have you here. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. <laughs> really is. The, in fact, I was just thinking about one thing that you share in common with uh, with Phil. And that is, now you are an elder daughter with a younger sister, Haley, right? Where now, yes. Phil, you're I'm uh, the youngest. You're Don. the young, and Don is older. Yes. Right. What well, you have fabulous family, of course, Juliet. Was there great rivalry between you and Haley, or? Yes. Well, not really, because Haley um, started in films, and I started later than she did in the theatre. And we've never been up yet for the same part. <laughs> there might be if we are, perhaps, but we never have. And um, I think she's great, anyway. And she thinks I'm great, so there's no rivalry. <laughs> That's true. Do you have any rivalry? Uh, no, because we're always working together, except for tonight, you know, we're always working together and there's no... Uh, Have you often done shows on your own, in fact? Uh, well, you know, occasionally, you know, sometimes. It, uh, now that we're with the series, we're, we're more divided up, you know, because we have to do more things. But who does he feel, because he's older than you, that he should choose the songs or anything like that? Now, the, 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 to sing them together, you both have to really want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one can satisfactorily uh, yeah. screw it up. Yeah. Easily, <laughs> if you really want to. But normally our tastes, our musical backgrounds is obviously the same, so our tastes are, you know, are similar. Mm. What do people who meet you expect, Phil? Do they, do they expect you to sing to them or what? No, no, I don't think so. They uh, used to expect for both of us to be here to start with, you know. Like, <laughs> I can, we expect you to be a pair. Yeah. Yeah. And everything you're you're you not do. really supposed to go out without it. No, no. I, I, we get questions like, um, uh, do you live together? You know, I'm 31. You know, <laughs> 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 you know, like I should be living with my brother. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, you know. I got my own life. And things like that. You know, it's a funny kind of questions. Because you're brothers, because you work together, and you know, they really think you're, you know, <laughs> do all that. You mentioned hair. Do people concentrate on whether you should have a haircut and that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, there's, um, I was in Las Vegas, and uh, Don and I were playing at, uh, at, at the uh, landmark. And uh, after the show was of it, was a bottler's convention. It, 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 it brings up the story. The, uh, Somebody said to me, uh, I came out, as I came by, she said, uh, uh, enjoyed the show, except I have one complaint, and you know, that's what I really needed it that night, you know, and you need to hear a complaint, and I said, uh, the show, so I said, the show was too loud. She said, no, I said, uh, too soft. She said, no, no, I said, too short, no, too long, no. And I said, what, what, what was wrong? She said, you sounded much better when your hair was short. <laughs> <laughs> 
What do you deal with it? And then I gave her some snap, he come back, oh yeah. You know? <laughs> Equipped. <laughs> like hey, talking of the way you sound, if I was to say that I just noticed a guitar there, could that be an introduction to a song, do you think? Uh, yeah, I will gulp very loudly, but... And in and total amazement. Uh, you'd think I'd have never had one of these before. <laughs> this song is a, is, a, is about, uh, it's a song Don and I recorded. Uh, I normally sing the high parts, so if I wander off into that direction, you'll understand why. Right. Way down in gold and green, prettiest girls I've ever seen. A man in Kentucky sure is lucky to look down in Golden Green. Golden Green folks treat you kind. They let you think you don't mind. A man in Kentucky sure is lucky in Golden Green you walk you don't mind. Kentucky sunshine makes a heart unfold. Warms the body, and I know it touches the soul. Bluegrass is fine, Kentucky owns my mind. The fields down in gold and green are the softest grass I've ever seen. A man in Kentucky sure is lucky to lie down in gold and green. Kentucky sunshine makes the heart unfold, warms the body, I know it touches the soul, bluegrass is fine, Kentucky owns my mind, rolling green, rolling green, wake down. Welcome back to the festivities with the smashing Connie Stevens, Phil Everly and Juliet Mills. We were just talking about that, Juliet. Did you agree with what uh, Connie was saying earlier on about marriage? Yes, and so I on? thought she was marvellous and she put it, put it all so well. <laughs> I'm with you all the way and I'm getting that book. <laughs> okay. What do you particularly with that she said? Well, the thing of having to do your own thing when you're married, not try to not lose yourself in your marriage you have to each one has to I mean it's a difficult thing isn't it I mean two people who've never lived together met maybe only a year or so ago suddenly living together and doing everything together never out of each other's sight really all the, the, the romance has to be kept there but it's not all romantic it's not being picked up on the doorstep and, and always looking pretty <laughs> is it there's those awful days where you feel awful and you look awful and everything you don't want to be yeah I think what's the most difficult accommodation do you, to make just not having any time alone do you think so? I don't know I don't know the most difficult um I think you certainly need a great sense of humor <laughs> a lot of the time and try not to let things get too dramatic. I don't know, in my case anyway, I think uh, everything's a bit exaggerated and extreme and sometimes little things become much more important than they really are. And I think you just have to be a bit grown up when you're married. I don't think I was quite grown up enough when I was married. And I'm calmer now. Things don't get me all... And the same as Connie was saying about you know, the, the romance and... Well, she put it all so well, I don't want to repeat it. No, but you weren't repeating it all. You were adding, <laughs> adding to... Did you, do you agree with that, Phil? Well, um, I don't know about, you know, being your own self, but you have to be your own self at all times, anyhow, in any kind of relationship, whether, you know, right or not. But uh, uh, I don't know that being together all the time is a problem, because uh, I was gone all the time. <laughs> now, we've got a, now we've got a new problem here, the problem of being gone all the time, right. I don't know, it wasn't much of a problem for me, but that's what, you know, the kind of livelihood I, uh, as a profession I'm in, and uh, it's difficult with, um, 
to do all that, I guess it did. Uh, must put a, a hardship. So I don't know. There must be some happy medium in between it, too. A certain amount uh, of travel. Really. You know, it's really funny, though, now that I'm, it's, I'm no longer married. You know, and uh, it reminds me of the times, I don't know if in, in every man's life, maybe married man's life, uh, there is a time when he's laying there in bed, you know, looking up at the ceiling saying, I wonder what it'd be like to be single. <laughs> I thought, well, now I'm trying to find out. It's just about like it was before, you know, when really? I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. When an emotional commit themselves much more, you see, that's, that's where they get tripped out. Uh, you, if you love, see, a woman's love gets deeper as the years go by. I'm sure it's working, but it's more. <laughs> Don't you find that it grows in other dimensions and it keeps adding and adding? And uh, they just don't have the same emotional um, commitment. Because, like, like you just said, gee, I don't know, it just didn't bother me that, you know, we weren't together and stuff. Whereas with a woman, all of a sudden, they, every year, that year is taken away from a woman, and a man is added on. You oh, know what I mean? Do you follow me? Uh, yeah. Because not only are they financially committed, their, uh, their youth, I mean, their youth, their children, everything they build their life around. So every year that goes by is just that much more intense. And with a man, it's the opposite. He gets a little bit more relaxed. So that's where the rub comes. And I think that women have to find a way to combat that, you know. It's very difficult. It would seem to me, though, that it would be, that would be actually a, a, a virtue because as a woman, can, you know, if she, as if she loses, she should commit more to a husband, one would think, and the whole family unit. And that's because that's what I always do. You know, a man sort of supports that whole thing. Yes, but if a woman gets too committed to become clinging vines, they become demanding, and the romance goes immediately like that. Uh, I don't believe, I really think that the, the uh, more that they're involved, the more they're concerned, the more they're all that, the, uh, obviously I didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you two should get together, I think they're, 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 they're not a bad idea. <laughs>